Do you change based on the seasons uh, how many buttons you have open on your shirt, or is that? Just I don't have any buttons on my shirt ever. <laughs> actually, I've, I've had comments on some of my recipes that are like, in order to make this recipe and have it actually taste really good, you cannot wear buttons. So. It's actually really sunny and beautiful outside, so I'm actually pretty happy. Um, also, I love apple pie. Uh, but I'm gonna show you uh, not only the apple pie, but one of my favorite crusts. This is actually legitimately my go-to pie crust uh, for all pies that I make. Um, it's a butter crust, and the I guess the secret ingredient is really the vodka. So for this pie, and actually I think probably most pies, like there is the crust and there is the filling. And the first thing that we're gonna do is we're going to work on the crust. This particular recipe makes um, a top crust and a bottom crust. So we're gonna mix our dry ingredients. And so salt, very important. I've got some AP flour there and some granulated sugar. You know, people don't really understand this, that uh, crusts actually have flavor. They should have flavor. This is cold cubed butter. Um, you can do this in a food processor, or you can do this by hand, or you can use a pastry cutter. I like to do it by hand uh, just because it's, uh, it's kind of fun. So this particular technique is called frissage. Um, and basically we're just gonna smear the butter uh, into the flour and create nice flaky layers. What I do is I just smash it in my hands. You just have to go a little more quickly because your hands are obviously warm. So here's what you're looking for. You're smashing the butter into really thin layers and you're, each time that you smash it into your hand or into the counter, um, you flatten it out and you get a layer of flour on the top and the bottom. Like all of these little like bits uh, with the flour and the butter are gonna create flaky layers. While it cooks, um, the, uh, the steam from the, the butter is going to expand and because it's sandwiched between layers of flour, it's going to puff up. All right. Yeah, we're ready. <laughs> cool. Hands clean enough. For pie emergencies, I actually do keep vodka in the freezer, um, and also in case anybody needs a cocktail. Um, it's good to keep the vodka cold. Basically, everything, when you're making a pie crust, you want everything cold. Pour out a quarter cup of vodka, a quarter cup of ice water, and then I've got two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. And I'm gonna make a little bit of a well here and then just kind of pour it all over. All right, and then you don't wanna work the dough that much. You just kind of want to mix it until it comes together and just holds its shape. It is warming up, so the butter is loosening up. All right. Or just stick your hands in an ice bath to try and lower, yeah. lower your body temperature. <laughs> well, you know, you could like stick your whole body in an ice bath. So you can see like little pieces of, uh, or little bits of flour, and that's fine. All right, I'm gonna pat it out but it's a little warm, so I'm gonna just pat it out and then I'm gonna stick it in the freezer for five minutes just to firm up a little bit. Oh, in the morning. Something embarrassing. What? I love raw pie dough. I ate a little piece earlier. I eat like boatloads of it. I'll like put jam on it. Wait, on raw, like, raw pie dough? Raw pie dough, yeah. I, I also used to just eat butter plain <laughs> as a kid. I had a Mighty Ducks fanny pack that I stored my butter in. My family went to India uh -huh. and I had my butter stored in my fanny pack and we landed and it was like July in India and my mom saw something like trickling down my leg and opened the fanny pack and was like, have you just been keeping butter in here the whole time? Oh and I was like, yeah, God. I keep it to snack. That's a pretty awesome butter store. Can I try a little bit of your raw pie dough? Of course. Oh my God, I'm so excited. Mm. Okay, so it's nice and cool. Um, I'm gonna show you one of my favorite layering techniques. Basically, you just pat your dough down to about an inch thick and then cut it into quarters. And then just stack them up. And then press them back down. And what we're doing when we flatten them out, we're just adding more layers to it. 
and I didn't write this into the recipe, but like I usually do this four times just to, you know, make it really, really flaky. So I'm gonna do it one more time just because I like to do this a lot. <laughs> Layers. So now I'm gonna cut this in half and pat them out into discs. So I'm gonna go ahead and just flatten that out. And you want to let this rest at least a few hours in the refrigerator. Um, that's gonna do a couple of things. It's gonna relax the gluten that you have already developed, uh, but it's also gonna give the flour time to hydrate. Okay, so this is the filling. Obviously, they're apples. Um, so I have already peeled and sliced uh, most of the apples. So what I, what I do normally when I make um, an apple pie, certainly, but even a peach pie, uh, anything that's gonna discolor slightly, um, I always get a bowl of water and then squeeze a couple of lemons in it. And so you're basically creating a, an acid bath. So what I'm gonna do, I'm using Pink Ladies. Um, it's one of my favorite apples, Pink Ladies, Wine Saps, uh, Brayburns. Uh, you want a firm, crisp, tart apple. I'm gonna core this. You can use a melon baller if you have that, but who has that? And then you just want really nice thin slices, like a quarter to an eighth of an inch thick. So, I'm sure Claire's not here. So there is a trick. I mean, it's not really a trick. It's like, I hate blind baking pie crust. It's just like so annoying. So you preheat your, your sheet tray and then you put the pie on the hot sheet tray and let it cook there for the normal time. So you'll actually cook the crust and brown it. Um, all right, so now I'm gonna drain these. And just put them back in. All right, so now we're gonna mix all of the dry ingredients into the apples. So we've got granulated sugar dark brown sugar, always delicious in a fall apple pie. Uh, salt, salt is another key ingredient. Um, uh, I can't tell you how much I hate desserts that don't have salt. I'm using cinnamon, cardamom, and allspice. All right, that is looking good. And now I'm gonna add a little bit more lemon juice. Um, this will continue to help prevent any browning, but more importantly, we're just adding some additional flavor. And anytime you cook for long periods of time, whether it's a soup, a stew, or a pie, um, flavors start to flatten out. And what any sort of acid does um, is it just brightens things. Um, so I'm gonna use some apple cider and reduce it on the stove. And what that's gonna do, it's gonna give you really nice concentrated apple flavor. We're adding a whole vanilla bean to this. So I'm gonna go ahead and split this before I go over to the stove. So just pour this in. If you can find fresh apple cider, that is awesome. So I'm gonna bring this to a boil. Uh, so you wanna reduce this down by like half, two thirds. Um, it's gonna start to get kind of thick. And then once that's happened, I'm gonna pour off the, uh, the juices that have accumulated from the apples into uh, this mixture and let those reduce. And then I wanna take it to a really nice syrupy stage. Um, I'm also going to add some cornstarch. This is going to help thicken the juices. So this is reducing nicely and you can see like all those beautiful vanilla beans that are in there. So I'm gonna add the accumulated juice. Oh, now we will add those juices in and continue to boil. Uh, but this is what you want. It's gonna be nice and dark amber color. It's almost gonna, it almost looks like a little caramelly. We've gotten all of the flavor out of these guys. Now just stir up my cornstarch and water mixture. And I'm gonna add that directly in to the cider. So we're just gonna cook this for about a minute. Um, we want to return to the boil. So when you, whenever you're cooking with cornstarch or whenever you're using cornstarch, you never get the full thickening power until the cornstarch returns to a boil. This is going to bind with the liquid and create a really, really nice little thick apple, apple gravy. So this is cooled ever so slightly. You don't want to let it get too cool. You want it to be at least, you know, slightly pourable because as it sits, it will actually stiffen up. Oh, it looks really good. It smells so good already. 
I am going to have a little piece, because why not? Um, so I like to roll my pie dough out onto a piece of parchment. For so this actually just loosens it up a little bit. And the good thing that Priya's not around or else she'd be eating my dough. And that would be weird. Shit might also be leaking. Melted butter, also weird. I usually start from the center and then just pull it towards me and then give it a little bit of a turn, pull it towards me. Turn, pull it towards me. Definitely you want this on the thinner side, but you know, I think what probably is most important, you can get away with a thin crust, but the thing that you wanna make sure is that it's large enough to fit your pie dish. Also, as long as your pie crust is two inches longer than the, the size of the dish, then you're fine. And now we will roll out the second crust. All right, I'm gonna throw this into the freezer. That's gonna be our top crust. So this is the first crust that I rolled out and it's been in the uh, refrigerator for about five minutes from the time that it took me to roll out the second crust. Um, the top side is nicely uh, unfloured. So I'm gonna use that as the bottom and then just, there we go. And then just let it slump down into the pie dish. The freezer is your friend. If it starts to get too warm, just throw it in the freezer for five minutes. Um, so excess flour, just brush it off. You want to leave about an inch of overhang over the edge of the pie. And I actually did a pretty decent job of rolling this out. So there's not that much overhang. Oh, look at that. Oh, so good. Whoa. You're probably thinking, God, that is like a massively overflowing pie. But these apples are gonna cook down. So, you know, this mound of apple is gonna shrink down probably a good two inches into the pie. So we're gonna throw this in the, fr in the freezer uh, just so the crust can firm up a little bit. And then we will add the top crust. The, um, the crust is a little bit stiff, which is good. Also, the, uh, the apples, the surface of the apples are actually really cold, which is good because I'm about to put the top layer of crust on. But first, I'm gonna make an egg wash. Um, so this is going to do a couple of things. It's going to be the glue that binds the two crusts together. Also gonna add a little water just to thin it out a little bit. Just like a teaspoon or so. And before I put the top crust on, I'm going to take two tablespoons of butter and just dot the top. Um, as the pie bakes, it's gonna melt in there. This is my chilled top crust. So you want this top crust to be slightly uh, smaller than the bottom crust uh, because we're gonna roll the bottom over to the top. So I'm just gonna go ahead and trim this. Make sure as you start cutting that you're leaving at least half an inch of overhang. So now we're just gonna roll the top over. And again, if it, if it starts to seem too soft, then um, just throw it back in the fridge or the freezer. So now you can kind of press down a little bit just to seal it a little bit better. And if you, you know, trim off a little bit too much, or sometimes like as you're uh, pushing the dome down and filling in the gaps, um, it'll pull some of the, the, the dough and you'll have less uh, than you anticipated. So what you can do is just fill in gaps with like pieces of the trimmings. So what I'm gonna do is push in with my thumb in between my index finger and my thumb in my other hand, and that will make a nice exaggerated flute. Egg wash the top. And you can be pretty liberal with this. You can use demerara sugar, you can use granulated sugar, um, you can use raw sugar. Uh, I would not use just the regular brown sugar because that's gonna clump um, and there's a little more moisture in it. <laughs> so the, um, the steam vents are really, really important. And you can, I'm gonna, make sort of an exaggerated kind of decorative steam vent. 
You can just do slits in the pie if you want. I'm gonna make four little triangular shaped cuts. And then just pull this up and over. I think it looks pretty. And also it's going to ensure that steam is going to escape. All right, now I'm going to put this in the freezer for 10 minutes to firm up the crust and to get a little chill on the apples. And I have pie scraps, which I'm very excited about. Okay, so I have a hot oven, 425 degrees. The rack is set in the center and I'm gonna put this sheet tray in there to heat. So this is the cold pie. All right. Okay, so one of the things that's a little bit unique about the uh, how we're baking this pie is that we're gonna start at a really high temp, 425, and then we're gonna lower it after five minutes uh, to 375. And the reason for that is we have, uh, we have a really cold, uh, hard crust from the, uh, the, free the 10 minutes in the freezer. We're putting it in a hot oven to really set the crust. Do we have ice cream? Yes! Oh my God, you just made my morning. So one thing about the technique on the hot sheet tray, you can see how nicely brown the crust is on the bottom. This is probably a Rick size slice, but... So it's still nice and juicy. I don't like pies that are like overly set, um, especially with an apple pie. Like you want some of that nice juice to still be in there. It's just beautiful, like thin, flaky layers. Look at that. Oh. Mm, that would be, that would be wrong. Hi, Sola. Place. Should I get the ice cream scoop ready? Yes. Oh, okay. do you want a scoop while I cut? Yeah. Great. I want an extra big scoop on mine. Okay. How's that? Is that enough? I mean, it's pretty. Matt. Hey, you want pie? Pie. Yes. Pie. pie. Ooh. Oh, hi, Carla. Hi. Hello. Oh, Rick. I don't have the beautiful testicles, but. <laughs> It's BA's best, but yeah. like a slight hybrid. Yeah. Um, I used the, I know. Here. <laughs> we need more ice cream. That's no, okay. It's okay. It's good. Oh, ice cream. See, actually, that's, that's even better. Yeah. It yeah. Is. yeah. Um, so I used vodka in the crust. Ah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Delicious. Mm. Look at those apples. Well, that was amazing. Yeah. I'm in a great mood now. Good. Mm -hmm. Yay. I'm going to leave with this. Oh, yeah. I'm doing the same. <laughs> Bye, Rick. Yeah. Bye. 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 I'm just going to sit here with the other third of this pie and a full pint of ice cream. And I'm going to be a very happy boy. Mm. Mm.